in no particular order, although the titles sound like a poem. Where to Look For in Winter by Claudia McWilliam, Young Romantics by Daisy Hay, Leslie Blanche by Anne Boston, Alan Clark, The Biography by Owen Truin, uh, The Storyteller, that is in fact Roald Dahl by Donald Sturrock, and um, E.M. Forster, A New Life by Wendy Moffat. Now, we had, this year, we had a runner-up because um, we couldn't really agree and we went this way, we went that way, and then it was suggested we should have a runner-up. The runner-up is The Storyteller, the Roald Dahl book, by Donald Sturrock. With the... <laughs> and the winner is Ian Forster, A New Life, by Wendy Moffat. Now, I know Wendy couldn't be here, but here are two, not one, but two daughters. And it is a, a terribly exciting book. However well you think you know his books, um, it doesn't matter. This is an exciting story in itself, quite bizarre, I must say, and thrilling. Did you, girls, did you enjoy it? Very much. I think we're obliged to, but yeah. we also did for real. Well, I think you're, I think you're obliged to say that. But <laughs> Anyway, who, what am I going to do with Terry? Give it to her. Give I'll it take her. it. <laughs> Are you older or younger? I'm younger. Oh, no. I'll, give I'll it to take her. it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I have a statement from her. Oh, yes. Yeah. Please, come here. Well, before I begin, I should say it's a, it's a great pleasure and joy to be here for my mother. Um, she didn't write this part herself, but I couldn't be prouder of her. And um, it's delightful that Emma and I, who are both here for the year doing our own research, have a chance to speak to you. Um, so this is, these are her words and not ours. <laughs> here is a sentence that I never imagined I would write. On Thursday, Lucy and Emma will accept the Biographers Club Prize for Best First Biography on my behalf. Lady Antonia Fraser will present the prize. It is a fine sentence, but fantastical. It belongs to the underrepresented, underrepresented genre of fairy tales for the middle-aged. Fortunately, my subject, Ian e. Forster, was a master of the genre. The suburban circumstances of his life were inauspicious for a great writer. Growing up as a timid, even fearful, gay boy in the shadow of the wild trials made him, for a time, certain that he was not like other people and would never be loved. But out of this life, which by right should have been tragic or pathetic, he honed his empathy and not only wrote some of the greatest novels of the modern period, but also found happiness and love on his own terms. Over and over again, his writing and living were fueled by a fierce devotion to what he wished might be possible. He imagined a world where human connections could be more honest and more various than those of the world's, worlds he inhabited. Forster shrewdly understood the moral tension, the tragicomity of this position. Now I get a bit. <laughs> my own, or rather my mother's own, Forsterian journey into his great life was shaped by fortune and remarkable friendship. My agent, Sidel Kramer, saw in a proposal sent without fanfare through the post the possibilities for a biography of the heart. In New York at Farrar, Strauss, and Giroux, one of the last independent and independent-minded presses, the publisher Jonathan Galassi took a risk on an unknown first-time biographer. Essentially, he edited the book by telling me to write more. Jonathan's profound belief in the project beguiled me into the faith that Forster's whole story, both the public story we think we know and the narrative revealed by his vast unpublished archive, must be told, would find an audience, and that I alone was writing it. In London at Bloomsbury, another place of independence, Bill Swainson used his exquisite tact and good sense to help me channel Forster's sensitivity into writing that reflected the complex character of my subject's life. My husband Donald asked me to read aloud what I had written each day. As you can tell, the practical devotion of many people has led me to this moment. To the Committee of Exemplary Biographers who judged the entries this year, Lady Antonia Fraser, Anne Chisholm, and Roland Chambers, I owe my admiration and thanks. 
not only for their recognition of my work, but for their marvelous writing, from which I have learned so much. I deeply regret, because of obligations to my students, that I cannot be here tonight to tell you how much your example has meant to me, how astonished and touched I am by this honor. The recompense is that while I shall be discussing why we like Emma Woodhouse despite her faults, with a small group of 19-year-olds in Pennsylvania, <laughs> my two wonderful daughters, Lucy and Emma Kaufman, both fine writers, thank you, Mom, <laughs> will stand in to redouble my thanks to the Biographers Club. Thank you. Thank you, so much. Thank you, so much. you did that so gracefully. Thank you.